What's up, everybody? My name is Nick Shackelford. Welcome to my house. I'll show you what we got going on. Come on, let's go. What's up, guys? So this is kind of like where we hang out. Um, sometimes we do some late nights, and it's always good to get some steam off. So this is where a lot of games go down. The real magic gets done right here. But I'm gonna show you where I kind of do my work. What's up guys, welcome to my kitchen. So yeah, I do a lot of work here, both on my computer as well as on that grill. But the most fun that happens is outside, let's go. I mean, if you're living in Southern California and you have a house without a pool, you're not doing it right. So this is definitely where we like to cool off. All right, so here's the game plan. James hit me up, he asked me to do an interview. I know exactly where I'm gonna take him and take you too, let's go. Hey, hey there you are. <laughs> What's up buddy, how are you? I'm good, I'm very good well. to see you. You ready uh, to chat it up and do this interview? Yes, I am, but we're not gonna do it here. I'll show you around, but I'm gonna show you a better place where we kind of talk, okay? You sure, this place is beautiful. I know, it is nice, but the place is even better. All right, let's do it. So Nick, thank you for sitting down with me. Heck yeah. We chat all the time on Facebook Messenger and Skype, we've been boys for a while. So it's definitely <laughs> fun for me to uh, interview you for Barcelona. I'm ready. Um, I got a lot of questions for you, but uh, let's start out first with, uh, when did you first know what a CTR was or a click? The first time I knew like CPC, CTR would have to be a late night at Apple, like my first client really, when I was working on the Apple team. And they were, all we measured were clicks and video views. The Apple team. Okay, yeah. so look, let's, it's so funny. So Apple as in the, the computer and electronics company, Apple. Yes, yes. Wow, okay, let's go before that then. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to, give, give me the run up on you on, a, on a, a personal level, how you ended up on Apple, what that kind of path was. Yeah, I, I think I've talked a little bit about this before, is like I wasn't a performance marketer. Um, I was a team team player, so I did the traditional route. You go to school, you go to college, um, and from college, you. My dream was to play a professional soccer player, right? So at the beginning, when I kind of jumped in, it was I needed good good grades to get into a good school right. to be a pro. Okay. Right. So I, that's all I cared about. Then and I chose my courses accordingly, which were as like all e-com, I mean no e-com classes, it was all communication classes. Okay, so I want to be a valuable major. Yeah, traditional uh, e-com guy. And we got into the second university, which was St. Louis, so middle America, St. Louis, go Billikens. Um, the main thing there was, I, I didn't give a shit about grades, I didn't get, care about that stuff. It was, how do I play more soccer? Sure. That's what I wanted. So and what led it to, like, the, the goal was to be a pro soccer player, my dream team, which is like, I'm a California kid, was to play for the Los Angeles Galaxy. Okay. Which, thankfully, when I graduated in 13, my first two years of like real work job was being a professional soccer player. So I played. Wow, so your first professional job was playing professional soccer. Done, that was it. And I was like, I made it. That's what I wanted to do. Wow. But the little bit part of me during that whole time was like, I did internships. One of the first people to impact me was actually at um, an internship called Switch in Missouri, and her name was Amy Castellano, and she, she was a creative director, and I was introduced to like advertising agencies and how they 
how they brought on clients and create ideas and the What did Switch do? Sorry to interrupt. What did Switch do? Switch would be very close to like traditional activation. So major clients they had was like NASCAR. So they'd have a brand, they'd go to a NASCAR event, and then they activate, right? Okay. Um, they would do pop-ups, different sort of um, actual physical builds of billboards. Okay. That's where they did a lot of their Traditional stuff. ass advertising. Yeah, not the shit we do today. Okay. Um, and, but it was weird because I was, my goal was soccer. And then from soccer was, okay, I still love a little bit of this advertising world, like I'm interested in it, but you had to go f full force and I committed and childhood dreams being a pro soccer player, that's what I wanted. So I wanted to make sure I did it. Wow. And then after now, okay, done playing soccer, not going to do this, scratching this other itch. <sighs> yeah, that's rough, man. That's, that's, that was a very, very like rough time in my life. It was all I wanted, all I did was play, right? It's, you trained, me and my mom, we would travel. And I learned that I got there and like it wasn't what I thought it would be. Like I wow. was two hours of work and I was doing what I love, but then I had all this day left. And it wasn't until like I started getting reached out from brands going, hey, like wear my stuff, I'll send you free product. And I was like, I'm a dude who, not the best on the soccer team, but like I'm there and I'm having brands hit me up. And, so like, you became an influencer. Yeah, it was weird because like I love influencer marketing. But they were sending me products because I was in there. I was a Galaxy player. And wow. I'm, like, I'm like, okay, there's something here. I what type it. of products did you get shipped? Okay, so I was a goalie, so I got goalie gloves. Okay. So as soon as goalie gloves were shipped to me, like I'm like wearing product. I'm like, this is nice. I'm not paying for anything, right? And it was truly, truly impactful to see that you as a brand, like you're a pro athlete, you are a brand. Sure. You, the, whatever your persona is, that's who you're going to attract. And I attracted a great guy. He's out of Canada. His name is Dennis. And he goes, here's my product. Please wear it. And I started having kids hit me up. Kids asking me, like, what are these gloves? And I'm like, you should buy a keeper. And I'm getting word from Dennis going, hey, man, every time you post, you're selling my gloves. Thank oh, you. Wow. I love that stuff. So I, Organic influence. Organic influence. And I got really, really obsessed. I was like, okay, if I can sell this product, like, how do I get a piece of this? Like, how do I get a, like a little, like at the time, an affiliate deal with them, right? Sure. So I didn't know anything about those kind of worlds. Still don't know much about that world. And they they would tell me, okay, if you sell five gloves, like you get, A, you get more gloves and I'll give you a piece of every pair. And I was like, so fascinated. And then I'm realizing like my playing time wasn't really getting there, but like my marketing time was like increasing. Sure. And what really did it for me, it's so, so crazy. Remember the trend for man buns? Yes. Like big beards and like all yes. man buns. Yeah, so like yeah. there's a there's a picture, I'll pull it out for you guys in a little bit. But I got posted on Man Bun Monday. <laughs> I promise you. Yeah. And it went viral. Like I'm talking like hundreds of thousands of likes. I'm waking up with like DMs off the ass. Everywhere. From from, from, from a man bun post? <laughs> from a man bun boys and guys and girls. I never knew this about you. Oh my god. It was incredible. Like they they uh I'm not just getting DMs, I'm like, damn, I'm getting a lot of followers. Like, okay, what's up with this? Where do we go from here? And what actually happened was it wasn't soccer. Like that's like, I, I realized it was a really big shift. It was, I was falling out of love of my original passion. And I was realizing like, you can't trade time for money. Like, right. You, you could, and I knew like the timeline for professional athletes, like you only get so much. And then you're, no, you're then no longer relying on your body, you're relying on your brain. And usually as a pro athlete, your, your goal is to be a coach or you work for the organization that you love. And I was like, I think I have more to give. Like, I, I definitely went to school for this. Um, I have an ability to communicate pretty well with a lot of people and this has to do something. Sure. And how did it go from influencer to Apple? So there's a step in between that actually okay. I got very lucky with was actually PepsiCo. So here in, here in, like, uh, in Orange County, different counties. There's actually a West Coast region for the PepsiCo company. So you have Pepsi and then you have PepsiCo. PepsiCo is more on the restaurant side. Okay. And I got right place at the right time. I was coaching one of the higher ups daughters. Okay. Okay. Her name is Ava. And Ava, I was, she wanted to be a goalie. And I'm a 90s kid, like true, true uh, millennial. And there's two campaigns, one for Wahoo's Fish Tacos and BJ's restaurants out here. Okay. okay. And they're the older demographic of people speaking, the CMOs of these groups, speaking on like, oh, we need, we need more millennial families coming into our stores. Okay. That's the goal. And the woman, Rachel, she goes, well, you're young. Like, come talk about like what's going on in your life. Like, what do you care about? Well, and this is back when, remember when things were real cheap on Facebook, when you can grow a yes. page 
like that. Yes. Well, now it's, it, at that time I was talking about, guys, if you post pictures about what you're doing in stores, like me and my friends are going to want to come in there. And there's like, mind wow. blown. I was like, why does this matter? Like, how am I sitting here? First of all, I don't belong in this chair. Sure. Um, but I had all eyes at all times. Anytime I spoke and I was like, damn, this is where we're going. These big companies doing big revenue on like foot trafficking to restaurants are asking like, where do we post pictures? Totally. You know what I mean? Yeah, market gap. Millennial consultant, I saw you. Yeah. I it can't sounds even believe funny. this is such a thing, but I guess it is for big brands. Because think about it, if you're disconnected, like what they do, so here's exactly what it looks like. You have all this data and research that they give their, their CMOs or their like brand leads, and they go, this is our customer based on all this data points. And they're like, great, I get it. This is a nice deck, 40 pages. Give it to a creative agency. Then the creative agency pitches like, here's how we can get all these people into your store, right? But then there's still like this disconnection between what this actually says to the consumer, me being the millennial. Sure. So they needed to see like, okay, the creative guys would talk, the PepsiCo employees would talk, and then they all just turn and look and go, is this right? Got Does it. this make sense? So Got then I was it. speaking on behalf so of So you were them. there to basically understand and make sure that the messaging for your demo was, was on point got it okay makes so sense. it's so i say consulted because like anything else like that me explaining the whole thing it's really hard for people to go like that's a job and i was like yeah that's any project you took on they'll pay out for it wow it was too few and far between and you asked your question was how do you get to apple so rachel's connections of at this time apple didn't have a digital team they had a display, they had like website takeovers, they had their billboards, they had their TV spots, but they were really, really focusing on, and this is unbeknownst to Like on what, like on paid ads? Yeah, very paid ads, right? This was unbeknownst to me, like before the, they were building this team, like they had their search team, and they had, a, but they didn't have like a worldwide global social team, right? Okay. And so that's what, I was a part of that first team under a, t a lead called Alizon Fulleron, and they were building this out as we were going, so the very baby processes, but we worked in LA with their big agents called Mal Media Arts Lab. Okay. And they worked with the division of OMD, which was Resolution. Resolution Media was in charge of the direct response for uh, like Warner Brothers, Nissan, the big boys like yeah, that. Yeah, the big, big. And Apple was like the brand where like, I'm obsessed with this. Everything I do is pure Apple. Like, you know, same, same as you, right? Yeah, totally, 100% Apple. And it was, it was interesting to see because where I sit now understanding like direct response, like Purdue, you, you must impact bottom and top line revenues. This was more of like, okay, this went on TV. How do we cut it up and make it social focused? And oh, here's a couple million dollars for the, this country. And we're like, whoa. Did this, they have conversion goals or what metrics were you working off of? Video views, video views and the, how cheap your impressions were. It's all I cared about. Cause uh, there's no optimizing. You just build as much as possible to support campaigns. So the were big, you able to see conversions? Like, or what the, the effects of your marketing were? Or was it all brand? All brand, 100% brand. The only campaign I think that we ran was like the upgrade campaign, where if you had like a four, you'd come in like to get you in to like submit your phone to get a five. Okay. That's the kind of situation. Wow. It was, again, it's cool creative, fast paced, worldwide launches. We were part of, okay, here's a cool one. We were part of um, the iPad, Pro launch, okay. okay, and the iPhone 7. Those were the two main launches I was a part of. And the build up to it, the planning between like, it was like synchronized between, okay, billboards go up on Tuesday, banner takeovers on site go up on Wednesday, make sure social's ready to launch on Thursday at this wow. time. And this wasn't just happening in the US, like this was worldwide shit. What a great learning experience to be part of something like that. Oh, very fast, and I, and I would definitely admit now, looking back, like I wasn't ready for that. Got it. It's too much, too much reporting, too fast. Um, and too high a profile of a client to where any mistake, magnified. Sure. Right? And then obviously, the next jump, uh, when I first met you, yeah, uh, working for the man himself, Tim Bird at Agency Y. How did that come about? Oh, okay. So Agency, so Agency Y is close in Irvine here, in Newport Beach area. And right before that, I, was, I launched, co-founded with Jake Schmidt on the Fidget Spinners. Right, so that was my first dive into this dude comes to me and goes, man, this is gonna blow up. Like, we gotta get this on Facebook. Dude, you've just been packing it in. How old are you? I'm 27. Jeez, man, you pushed so much through. Like, 
they're keeping a step and another step. I miss Jake and Fidget, so I'm sorry. So no let's worries. go back a second. Apple, yeah. and then the fidget spinner thing, explain. Right, so it was like big brand, and then I was like direct response, and this fell on my lap, was not planned at all. It's pretty much 99.9% .9 thanks to Jake, because he was, he dropped it on me, he goes, dude, we're gonna do some significant revenue on influencers. I was like, cool, you should definitely do some significant revenue on Facebook. So like, that's like that's where I'm gonna jump in at. Right? Sure. And he goes, okay, here's our video. See what you can do. It's like $2 conversions. We're selling a $30 product. Wow. Smashing off. And I'm sitting here going, okay, I, I, I knew platform, I was top platform from Apple, but we weren't reporting revenue. And I'm going, okay, now I can like actually push for revenue and conversions. Sure. And now you got optimizations. Yeah, and I was learning it. Like I just dove in. I didn't know what exactly what I needed to do to pull levers, but right place, right time and like instinctually making these decisions on like day-to-day -day basis, hourly basis, was the right call. Wow. So what, what has led to Tim was I joined in, I was actually invited to the group by Jake. I jumped into Facebook ad buyers consuming, as uh -huh. you were, right? When yeah, you first, best group in the game. 100%. Really, Facebook Huge. marketing, you can get everything you need to learn about Facebook in that group and you can get 30 people that will help you in detail. Right. If you ask a good question. If you ask a good question. <laughs> if you don't, maybe not so hard. <laughs> but if you ask a good question, you're going to get a lot of help. Yeah, that, that group was insane. Right. Or it is insane. Is is. It was, so I was consuming, just consuming. And remember, Tim had a post. This is like my hacky way of getting a hold of people. Tim had a post and he goes, looking for internal media buyers, um, please take my test. So he posted this test, and I think I got like a 98% on it. And I hit him up, no response. This dude's so hard to get a hold of. Like, literally, it's so hard to get a hold of this person. Dude, I'm dealing with it myself the last couple of days. <laughs> he has such a good life, dude. He's just blessed. He's chilling, dude. Just I'm, the I'll godfather. I'll get back to you when I want. I was like, hey. Totally. But it's on his time. Here's how I got around this, okay? So I added him as a friend, and I'm like smashing. I'm like, I scored this, man. Here's the campaign. Remember Fidget Spinners? Like, that's all me telling him like, hey, listen, listen, I send him money on Facebook message, okay? If you send anybody money and you're their friend, you get this really weird notification that's like, ching, very similar to Shopify, and it rains money. Literally rains money in the message. How much did you send him? I think I sent him like 50 to 100 bucks. Something where it wasn't like, like two bucks. Yeah, like, totally. What is this? And he opened it and he was like, what? Like, what do you, why, why are you sending me money? I'm like, like, I'm in Orange County, like you need buyers, I scored this, like let's come and sit down. And he goes, okay, come in. So I remember showing up and I brought my, I brought my computer because I was like, I know how to impress, how am I gonna impress this guy? Like he owns this group, like what the dealio is. Brought my computer, I opened it and I showed him like my campaign structure. I'm like, this is where, like, this is what I've been able to do and here's my structure. Like I'm grinding, I'm hungry. What do you want me to do? Wow. And he like looked at it and he goes, no, the normal temper, he's like, well, like, like I, I need to know if like, you can do it again. Like, right, like, I, I see what you did, but like, that could have been a fluke. Can you do it again? And I was like, all right, hire me up. Let me grind, let me show you what I can do. And just put in massive hours. I think it was like six, seven months. I think just almost a year, close to a year. Nah, not a year. Eight months, I think I would grind it for him. And like in that office, like asking questions, hitting him up every single day. And we launched a handful of brands and scaling a lot of brands because the dude has these crazy tactics because like obviously he teaches this stuff but there's a difference between like one day of learning where it's like sure. a fire hose where it's like months totally. of just consuming right like you were the understudy 100 percent. and, I, and I, I took that super serious because i'm to this day i'm super thankful for the opportunity to like actually learn on businesses and then also like execute and produce on businesses like there's one thing to learn and burn money sure. like you light it on fire like that shit happens all the time but being successful and then having Tim like check and go, okay, do you know why this was successful? And you're like, because I did A, B, and C. And he's like, good, go. So you basically got an apprenticeship yeah, yeah. under one of the best to basically bring, bring your knowledge up to highest level speed. For sure, and not even just like media buying, but like presenting yourself to others, right? Like he's, he's very, very good at having like the entire package of the experience of like what Tim Bird is. Yeah, so that, his own personal branding. Of course, and that, I, that related me back to being a professional athlete. I was like, I get it, like the way you package yourself, the way you come across, and I was able to see it firsthand by, we helped him build his deck of like how he presented when he does his masterminds. Got and it. There firsthand, I was saying, I'm like, wow, okay. From preparation to execution 
to follow, excuse me, to follow up. Right. I was like, unbelievable. This wow. is this is what this is what things need to be like. First class, everything about it. I was like, okay, that that's my leader. Like that's respect. Wow, right? outstanding. Yeah, I, I can see. If I were to to like understudy with somebody like that, that just at that high of a level, learning all the different parts of it, super blessing for business. Oh my gosh, yeah. And you just learn, right? We just had access to brands, and this is when drop shipping was just popping off. Got it. And I remember that. I was asking you a lot of e-com questions, and you had some stuff that was crushing. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah, we've, we've I've shown a couple of those things for on the last e-com tour, and like how we were testing products, and like the audiences that we would go to first, and the reasons why. Like that, that's really like built under Tim. Like it was execution, it was thought work, and it was planning, but it was all like ideated in that office. Got it. So after Tim Bird, you got to obviously do something big, I'm sure. Um, I know you and I connected on e-commerce a lot. I was asking yeah. you a lot of questions and e-commerce has really been your thing. Yeah. Common Thread Collective, where we're here, this amazing- uh, The house. The amazing office, really. Um, major brands on the wall. I mean, you got Lululemon up there, North Face, like, you know, the biggest of the brands. And it's got a cool vibe around here. Yeah. What do you do here? What does Common Thread Collective do? Give, give me a snapshot of what's going on right now. Okay, well, so after Tim's, I realized that Facebook is here to stay, like that's real. But there's so much other things that e-com stores or businesses or solo entrepreneurs like don't really think about in terms of having a sustainable business that isn't gonna burn out once your product is done. So I leaving Tim's was more of a, more of a way of finding like what else needs to be learned to be a really good marketer, or a really good entrepreneur, a really good businessman. And sure. the team here, like the, the management here of specifically is Taylor Holiday. I would say there's very few men in my life that have influenced me as much as like how, how much as Tim does, like your influence on my life. But Taylor Holiday has done a huge thing for A, me as like as a man, like just being a good man. And really? Then, uh, completely, because he, the way he manages and the way he's able to communicate what is actually going on in his life and his business, it's the ultimate transparency, right? Like when you can see how he feels and he doesn't hide it in, he's not like buttoned up and like he's vulnerable, right? Like it's so big for me to see, like that's how you grow real businesses by showing everything. Yeah, and dude, my, my interaction with him, which obviously has been brief, I've watched some of the stuff that he's put out on Facebook and obviously just respected the hell out of the business. Yeah. I mean, you gotta respect someone that builds something like this. And uh, he's just been so mellow and chill, man. It just is like a nice sign of someone who built a business and is not like pushing it or braggy or anything. He's just like the mellowest dude. So yeah, on a technical side, so you talked about the benefits of him on, on right, a, right. you know, personal side. But now as a business person or a media buyer, wh where has he kind of guided you? I, on media buying, I would think he's, he'll, he will agree to this. I've guided him. Okay. I promise you. So his, his thing is when I came in, I was called the like the gray hat guy. So I'm looking for a very direct response, heavy emojis and tactics to get them to page. Yes. And the more I've been here, like they over index on obviously helping big name brands, right? You can't take the same tactics of drop shipping or one off product shots with a 511, with a pup socks, with Got a Lulu. It. Like you can't you can't play that. So he's really been able to like shape the understanding of like it's really three levers, right? It's visitors times conversion rate times AOV. Like it's on our wall right there. It's yeah, that's main, all that matters. It's all that matters. Like those are the levers. And he, he talks always about deep dive and understanding your consumer early on, right? How do you shape your persona? Because what he likes to focus on, what I like to speak about is like transactional content. Content that's going to drive a purpose. Content that's going to make you, a consumer, feel something so that they open up their wallet and give us money. I love transactional content. Right? It's beautiful. It's, it's what it is. And we talk about this so much and it's, it's driven from Taylor the way he like pitches things is you have, it starts with your creative, right? It starts at that front because like that is where the actual change is going to happen. Not on your targeting, not on your manual bid strategies. Like, yes, those things are necessary to get the ball rolling. But as soon as you have like your, what would you say? Um, like your balance, your base, the multiples of inc like increase or the multiples of uh, the benefit of going from like a 2x to a 5x isn't going to be on targeting. It's going to be on like the creative output. Like the difference yes. of improvement is on creative. 
We were saying this in the car this morning too about diagnosing things. Like, is that is the problem with the the revenue or the conversion side or the cost side? Yep. And as like time has gone on for me, the image seems to be like one of the strongest levers. And what I don't think even people pay attention to is, but like when you have a, a better performing creative and is going to usually lower CPC, it saves you money like everywhere. Oh like gosh. a hot creative can change things by so much. You know, it's uh, you're never going to be able to increase the conversion rate the amount that you may be able to decrease the CPC. Right, right. And see, that's even a huge talking point internally here because we're challenging ourselves to think of our goal as marketers is to drive like low clicks high conversion, right? Sure. But what if like that low click isn't qualified traffic, it's not driving conversion? Yeah. Am I okay taking a really expensive outbound click knowing that it's gonna back out, right? Like think about your your funnel, right? We're gonna get into this. But if you're at prospecting, you're hoping to get really cheap traffic to introduce your brand, right? You just want them in your funnel, you hit them with remarketing, and then as you get deeper in the funnel, guess what gets more expensive? Your clicks, yeah. your CTR, or your CTR gets hopefully better, yeah. CPMs get more expensive, yeah. because you've already paid double now. Like People forget, when you're spending on remarketing, you're spending two times because you already had to spend on prospecting. You don't really have that metric, but you have to take that into consideration. You're like, I'm spending more money on those audiences that I've already paid for. So it's being here has shifted our thought from not just acquisition, but it's like retention and frequency of purchases. Let's talk about that. What okay. does that mean? Okay, so a lot of the things that we talk about in this digital world is based on two things, acquiring new customers and massive screenshots, right? Like yes. The only way, like I guarantee you, I can post a huge story about, okay, I just launched this brand from scratch. Uh, we're learning about persona A, B, and C. We're letting them understand that if you speak a specific way to this audience, you're gonna increase your conversion rate. Or if I post a screenshot of a million dollars in a day and how I did it, like that, that pops off, right? It's, yeah, it's much it's more marketable. Very more, it's- Less in, applicable, more marketable. <laughs> yeah, right, because the realistic, the, the trouble that comes with scaling to a million dollars in a day is actually very, very bad for your business. And I'm learning that from A, like the debates internally, B, doing it and seeing what it's done to the entrepreneurs and like their actual business. And that's scaled to me, which is so sexy, is depending on what that means for your specific business, right? $50,000 a day from $10,000 a day, in our eyes is like, oh, that's not crazy, that's not sexy. But for that business, that might be ridiculous, right? That might mean they need to hire two people. That might mean they need to yeah. more, more, order more inventory. These are the things as like physical marketers of, uh, of marketers of physical businesses have to deal with. You know, like this scaling thing, Yeah, we had talked about it. I was talking to a super smart fucker the other day and his whole concept with a lot of stuff is that scale breaks things, you know? And, and uh, I really yeah, started yeah. to think about it, even on lead gen, you scale too hard, the call center performance goes down, they don't convert the leads. Ecom, you scale too hard, you have no problems with customer service, you got inventory issues, this, like this. And also, I, I've never really seen a massive scale maintained very well. You know, you, you burn out the audience quicker. Like a lot happens where I think the long-term play is sometimes better. I can't think of too many times when someone's like scaled to the moon and it was just- And I held. It was held because <laughs> somebody has to catch the ball. Like, you know, if you have a quarterback who could throw a million balls into the end yep, zone, yep, you yep. only have like one or two receivers, who gives a shit? But I think like sometimes we get so like amped up adrenaline to it's put the sexy. foot on the gas. It feels so nice to scale, but you forget like, Someone's got to like fulfill that. Right, right. And that's, and that's where we play at, right? Because what's expensive? Acquiring customers. What do you always have to pay for? More customers. Yes. Right, so if you, if you shift a little bit of your focus, which is something I'm very, very passionate about understanding, is if you can shift your focus to increasing the amount of time. So back to your question, what does uh, purchase frequency and retention mean? It's increasing the purchases from the customers you've already acquired. Um, sitting here talking to you now about this prospecting, remarketing, retargeting, yep. all of this. For the Geek Out event, okay. I've really wanted to be able to do a case study of this event because we're doing it all internally. Yep. You know, the, the new company, Purple Ad Labs, is making the videos and the websites and Got the store. It. My internal team is buying the media. Um, the event is all being handled internal. So it's really like a full case study. Yeah. You're um, building a brand. I'm building a brand, yes, quickly. You know, really, really trying to build a plane while I'm flying. The event's in 45 <laughs> days, yeah, it is what it is. We're scaling. We're, and scaling too quickly, as we just mentioned, definitely gonna break some shit. 
<laughs> um, okay, but, okay. But, yo, let's sit and let's together design the the plan, like how you would break it down, like prospecting, remarketing, okay. everything. Let's get out a whiteboard and just tell me how I should run it. And then hopefully at the event, we can kind of review. Uh, what we did. Let's review the results. Let's, I'm let's down, do I'm it. down. You ready to rock? I'm ready. Is the link in the group? The link is, the link is in the group, I promise you. All right, perfect. Cool. So normally, normally how we kind of go about doing this is I make sure that, that all brands that we get start out with, okay, here's your campaign. We understand what that is. It's a geek out tour. We have 45 days. I know my budget, it's like 50K right around that, but we need to make go sure- Go crazy, go 100 and we'll make the numbers easy. Okay, we'll go 100K, nice and flat. Um, so the way I would like to take this, so as a new brand comes to me, they kind of sit down and go, here's my product, here's what we want to accomplish, how do you lay this out? And why, the way that means to me is, what are our assets? So we have our assets tab. What are, our, what are we going to do at prospecting? Who is our audience? What type of creative do we need at the prospecting level? Um, what personas we're trying to develop top of funnel so that we can follow it through all the way from uh, re all the way from re-engagement to remarketing to even DPA if we have that activated from our catalogs. And this is the back and forth of the brand, right? Like a lot of these people don't get a, a lot of you guys don't get to see like what happens, but this is the dialogue that goes back and forth between what I think we need to be doing for his brand so that it launches on the right foot. Something that I've gone over tons and tons of times with multiple brands, whether you're established or you're like, hey, I just raised a bunch of money on Kickstarter, like what do I do from now? So how would go that and go, James, what kind of assets do we have right now? What are we working with? Um, so are you talking about just creative assets, including the, the websites and pre-sales or just videos and static images and stuff like this? Exactly. Creative. You have assets, okay. not the website. So we have uh, tons of video assets. So we've okay. got testimonial videos. Thank you. Is it, do we have long form testimonial or do we have... Define long form. Long form, anything above a minute for me right now. I have long form. Okay. So we have long form, one min. I got up to like, I would say three min. You have a three min plus? Okay. I have a three min. And the reason why right now long form for us, seven minutes plus is insane. These, these wow. live videos of women talking about a product or uh, one of our supplement brands, when they talk about why they use it, why that makes them feel, the relation, A, it builds you a massive audience that you can remarket towards. Plus it's so real, it's so transparent. So that the long form content you have, is it high production? Meaning yes. High yes. production, okay, yes. so your in-house team did I this? Got, yeah, I got, I got high quality that was done with high level cameras. And then I also have testimonials that are long form, but they were shot from iPhone, so I got both. You have long, so you have individual consumer, like people users. who watch it? Users, I have the okay. people that went to the last Geek Out event or were on the last Geek Out live stream that are talking about how much benefit they got out of it. And pretty detailed, they talk about how it's enabled them to do better, make more money, better campaigns, learn stuff. They're, they're solid testimonials. Okay, because that's my remarketing re-engagement campaign right there. Okay. Perfect. So we go long form content. Now here's what I would recommend to make sure that I haven't looked at them yet. As soon as I go through what their assets are, I recommend three, three things right away. Square form, because mobile first. We're only thinking mobile first. Check all your traffic, check all your campaigns. It's gonna be mobile. So square form, um, over 15 seconds so that we can run on Instagram. Okay, Okay, so no square problem. form. 15 seconds plus, so we can run multiple platforms. Um, we have testimonial, we have high quality. Do you have still images that's kind of like high with intrigue? Um, what I got is, um, I like, I've got screenshots of Facebook messengers or uh, in groups, people giving testimonials. Uh, so screenshots of testimonials from within the Facebook platform. So it gives like nice authenticity. Right, okay. So we have screenshots of actual results as well as um, still images of the event and the, where we're gonna be at, um, what you're gonna get, like detailed, I would, I would call that product specific content. Okay, yeah. Okay.
Okay, so I mean, we could really do this as long as we want, but I just want to have a Let's just go, I want to throw one other thing in there that I want to understand what I should do with it. Okay. So obviously I got lots of conversion-based ads. I got lots of educational videos. There's two types of videos I want to understand what you would do with, okay? okay? So I've got all these videos that I've been doing with the documentary, speaking to the speakers, okay? Yep. So that's one uh, very interesting form of, let's call it education, because I want to educate the users on how great the speakers are. Yep. Okay, so that's one type of education. Then the other type of education is I've got videos of the speakers from the last event, such as yourself, going really deep on a topic where I'm showing the uh, PowerPoint, I'm showing you talking about it, like really going in deep on it. Um, so it's like another type of education. So I've got like education of who you guys are personally as the speakers, yep. and then education as far as what you're bringing to the table technically. Okay, so those are two different types of content. Like right? One is what you're gonna get at the event, and yep. one is like building relationship with speakers. Okay, so to me those are two separate type of pieces of content that's gonna lead to two different outcomes. Because right now, like what we have is 45 days yep. to build up the pool, build up the audiences, yep. and then be, begin remarketing. Okay? Got it. So I would break it into two different things. So I would take the individual education of who we are as like marketers, yep. and I would make a mashable style of video. And what I mean by that is still images, short snips of videos with text overlay, talking a little bit about like, hey, this person did X amount of dollars in this amount of days. Uh, Josh Elzeche. Uh, entrepreneur that started multiple businesses with multiple partners, right? Just quick for intrigue, and that's would be fitting between like your prospecting, remarketing. Re got it, got it. Um, but so that is really important at the beginning. So now if we move into prospecting, the goal here at prospecting level, cold traffic. I'm not. I'm excluding. So it's exclude W C A. Website, uh, custom audience, visitors. I want visitors excluded. 180, cold, cold, cold traffic. Exclude and then purchasers. 180, I don't want anybody that I've already marketed towards to touch my prospecting okay, campaign. I've got a question for you. When you're prospecting, would you consider lookalikes? Like to me, lookalikes are still cold. Agree. You would put them in the prospecting category, lookalikes? Of course, why? Okay. why? Why do I believe this? I believe it's because Facebook is, these people never touched your page. Right. Facebook's saying these are most similar to yeah, audiences yeah, yeah. we're using. So good question here, if we get into audiences at, on prospecting level. Prospecting the type of content we want, right? So we're gonna have edutainment. Edutainment. Educational and, and, and entertaining. Yeah, I got um, it. <laughs> <laughs> My fault. Um, and this is speaker specific. To speaker. Um, the reason why I believe going specific to speaker is because the type of group, the type of speakers you have right now, are yep. all different. Yeah. You have you have writers, you have business builders, you have media buyers that run internal teams, right? So. This is creating a persona for the Geek Out Tour that, sure. that you're trying to pull and see like which is most profitable. Got okay? it. So then let's go down this exercise and go, okay, we're gonna go down the speaker funnel right now. Yeah. All right? Before we get into like the holistic Geek Out brand. Yeah. So we have, who's the first speaker? Uh, Nick Shackelford. Got it. Great guy. Great guy. Great, great guy. Beard. Great speaker. Great speaker. Really great guy. Highly recommend. Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> so we have Nick, okay? Who does he, who does he appeal to? Besides every, every single person everyone in the world. on earth, yeah, totally. <laughs> no. uh, Nick, so I would say media buying. Yeah, media buyers. Yeah, ecom, ecom media buyers specifically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's just do this, ecom. So Nick, media buyers, um, content slash creative. My topic, which is retention, uh, repeat purchasers. Retention. Okay, those are that's that's who I, that's a that's a, uh, a that's an audience, a right? That's a bucket of people we want to market towards. Okay, so Nick, right? Who's the next person we have? Let's go with uh, Brandon. Brandon Stewart. Hell on wheels. 
Yeah, Will Preneur. <laughs> Will Preneur, unbelievable person. I cannot, I'm, I'm really excited. Brandon, I hope you're listening, dude. I cannot wait to meet you, bro. Yeah, like, listen, such a good dude, man. One of my really, such a good dude. It's somebody that uh, I was really glad to meet via this event, and he already turned me on to some other really great people, so yeah, super solid. Hell yeah. Tell me about him. What, what, who do you appeal to? It's interesting, man. He used to be a Facebook rep, so just overall general knowledge, yeah, but I yeah, think yeah. this is a really strong uh, angle. So if you had a bucket, it's like me, like e-com media buying. Yes. Where, how can I bucket Brandon? A few things. So you had the Facebook rep thing. Got and it. He, he built apartments there. He did the four years there, okay? But then he left to do his own agency thing. Got it. Okay, so he went from internal to external. Correct. Okay. He went from working inside of Facebook to uh, starting his own uh, ad agency. Okay. Um, so I think people that own agencies. Got it. I think people that are entrepreneurs. So you he's because he's got he's... entrepreneurs uh, story as well. Okay, so I'll say business builder because yeah. he was internally understood. And since business builder nowadays is like. How do you build your business off of Facebook specific? Yeah. It's very important for us to understand like the inner workings, right? Yes. So biz building, plus it's really motivational. It is motivational, he's like He's yes. built everything he's always yes, wanted. Yes, totally, he's a fucking badass. So up the overall, entre, pre. N-E-U-R. N, entre, pre, N-E. N-E-U-R. Got it. That ain't right. Yeah, don't put it like uh, okay. under your bucket. It's definitely not spelling people. <laughs> not spelling. Yeah, totally. Uh, Illiterate. Biz builder. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> I don't think your handwriting is the hottest thing on earth either, my friend. Oh. Yo, also with uh, Brandon, it's trying for the human spirit, really, man. I mean, like legit, and we're going to talk about it. The guy was paralyzed in, in a snowboarding accident. Wow. And instead of just being like, hey, I tap out, whatever. Wow. He was actually a mechanic. He's paralyzed in a snowboarding accident. And he's like, yo, I'm not gonna tap out. And then he gets like super deep into digital marketing and the success of this. Like it's an amazing, it's an amazing push. Wow. Okay, so that's that's entrepreneurism. Like that is like not quitting because especially in the e-com game nowadays, you're, you're setting yourself up for like future successes. So you, it's not the quick turn and burn, find a product, drop ship it and sell it, right? This sure. is more of building sustainable businesses and this dude's entire life is about putting in work. Perseverance and pushing, yeah, he's a grinder. Perfect, okay, give me, I think there was other guy. Um, we, we, there's so many. I guess man. we can go, we'll just use these two. We'll use yeah, these two, for, right? Yeah. So we're understanding that these two people appeal to similar but different people, right? right. Different audiences, okay? We would then begin to market, okay, using, Past purchasers, we're gonna go right away to 1% lookalike. Okay. This is low hanging fruit. Always gonna go 1% lookalike. Okay, when you say past purchasers, then you're talking about you want 1% of what audience? The people that went to the last event, the people that added to cart the last event. What what one percent audience are you looking for here? Great question. So I would go one percent buyers that went to the last event. Okay. Okay, because there's two different buyers. We have the people that signed up for the in-person intensive. Yep. And you also have the person that signed up for the live stream. And do you want me to use one percent of the purchase data from the store, like an Excel that you're gonna upload, or do you want to use the pixels from the last event? So I would use the Excel, the hard upload. Okay. The reason because I I want I don't think there's a wrong answer with that one, to be honest with you. But I know if I want to upload the audiences that Facebook's gonna pull from buyers, that means a lot to me. Okay. So I'm gonna go 1% look like buyers. Now, I would also go 1% view, view content. I would go 1%, anything 1% to my site that's already happened, right? Okay. Because I want, I want the warmest traffic that Facebook's gonna assume. So 1% of the different conversion uh, events, the, the audiences of the conversion events from the last event. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. And then now we kind of get into like shaping the, the type of creative that needs to be speaking to the consumer that's going to more identify with me and identify with Brandon. Right? So if we come into, think about it, we have prospecting level. It's really top of funnel and we're really speaking and thinking about what is mass appealing with a little bit of a focus and a lens towards media buying. What's mass appealing, a little bit of focus and a lens towards overall triumphing through diversity, right? And then, then we have to think about, we're trying to sell Geek Out Tour. 
So we still have to marry in the personality of Geek Out Tour. Not only do you gotta marry in the personality of the Geek Out Tour, but I think it's important, like with our audience all the time, they're coming for high level content. And that's why I don't know if, if Triumph of the Human Spirit may potentially even convert. Like I know my audience is coming there because they want some expert level shit. Right. Like that's it, that's the geek out, that we go deep, we do things like this, like we get in the lab and grind some shit out. So my concern with this has consistently been, am I giving enough meat to let them know this is still some geeky data shit? Right. You know, that, that's that been my, my concern with the brand is to make it cool, but stay, Stay in the gutter, you know what stay, I'm saying? I get you. Stay yeah, in stay the lab. grinding. Stay in the stay lab. Stay grinding. Yeah. Well, it's so the way, way I would respond to that is like understanding your concerns as a brand, trying to formulate what's gonna like convert, what's gonna push someone to buy, and I think buying into the person is a way of doing that, right? Because you're obviously gonna speak to Geek Out, right? So Geek Out itself is a brand. So this has nothing to do with branding, nothing to do with me, but everything to do about the ideology that you formulated. And this would be a separate camp, I mean obviously separate campaign, right. but a separate level of attack. You'd break it, you would break your prospecting into by speaker and then overall geek out event brand. Right, because what are we trying to solve right here? We're trying to solve someone who's relating to me and the message that I have about <clears throat> media buying. Yep. Someone relating to Brandon and the message that he has about building a business and moving forward with brands. And then Geek out in general, like the data driven, you're gonna get there in front of us and we're gonna talk about actual results, shit we're doing day to day. Yeah, that's, totally. That's its own campaign. Raw, transparent, technical. Because we're doing this, right? Like you're not gonna do a geek out event, like this is number two, then we're gonna have three, four, five. And what we need to understand is who, what, what consumer we're speaking to is actually gonna be buying consistently. If you find out that Brandon speaking about this triumphant um, overcoming of a tragedy into like building a business, that's what converts. I want to know that because every single time we're about to shape tons of stories around that. I was going to say, we're going to shape the events around that. Like exactly. if you find an avatar that hits. Perfect. And if we can define an avatar, sure. that's where we're going at. That's why you have geek out, the individual speakers. That's why we build this funnel to understand, not just like, oh, this piece of creative copy is performing. Cool. But it's like, what type of personality you're putting into this moving forward? Okay, so now let's say uh, for argument's sake that we have multiple different campaigns. We've got a geek out campaign, a branding campaign, a Nick campaign, Right. okay? Now, when it's time to test creatives, whether it be ad copy or images, it's an expensive CPA for this product. Right. The AOV here is 800, 900 bucks, right? Yep. So the cost per acquisition is gonna be expensive. How much do I need to test on the creatives on each different campaign? There's a lot of speakers, there's eight speakers. Eight speakers, right? So then I would kind of go back to eight speakers. Eight speakers. It's a lot. It's a lot. I've been wondering, I mean, obviously I can't test for CTR, but I was wondering if I could test, for example, they're going to a pre-sell. The, the click-through rate on the pre-sell is a nice indicator. Of course. Right? It's, it's an early step indicator that I was thinking it'll be cheaper. Like once I get enough conversions, I can correlate the conversions back to the click-through rate of the pre-sell and use that to test against as opposed to how many conversions I'm going to need to make any decisions. What do you think about that? So if you gave me a budget and I had to split that up, you said, say you have a hundred grand, you're like, how, yeah. what percentage of testing you want to allocate towards each, I guess, like funnel until yeah. you kind of make a decision? I would tell you 15%, 15 grand. Okay. We need to test with 15 grand because I need to understand. 15 grand per guy? Or no, overall. overall. It's 50, that's okay. my overall testing okay. show okay. divided by the funnels. Okay. You have to invest in that because this is, again, a long term play. Yeah. We're yeah, building yeah. the brand. So, what I'll tell you is straight up, James, we're formulating. Now, if we have to get really dirty into like what angle I'm taking for each of these and each of these and this one, it's going to take forever. I'm not going to do that right here. And Probably. we don't have 45, in 45 days, I don't think we can go that deep. Uh -uh. We don't have time. Right. And, all, so and money, the cost will be crazy. Of course. So, what we're, so understanding the cost is crazy, we're gonna choose one creative, which is gonna be our mashable of all speakers, right? Mashable of all speakers, because that's gonna be able to speak about different topics, and you're gonna get the best of everything, okay? So again, we'll take the mashable. All speakers. Okay, mashable of all speakers, and we're gonna run it to your 1% best performing audiences of your look like a buyers from live streams, your look like a buyers from in person and 
Yeah, those two, I'll start there, right? Because now we can do the overall arching themes that are gonna be consistent throughout the entire Geek Out tour. Now that what's gonna happen is, from Geek Out, so it's, we're not gonna focus on me or Brandon, we're gonna focus on the entire Geek Out itself. Geek Out, okay? So from Geek Out, we're gonna have mashup of all speakers. <laughs> mashup of all speakers. I would go, so we have, we have our long form, we have our square, we have our individual entertainments. Mashup will be three variations. One video. The reason why I'm gonna go one video is because we don't have enough time to test. We have 45 days, okay? We have our best performing creative from our last campaign. That's low hanging fruit. We're gonna start there. And then we're gonna start testing the different copies. And I don't have an exact dollar amount I would kind of put onto this. I would let our leading indicators or CTR, add to cards, make our decision there, okay? Then we kind of go into prospecting. This is where we're starting with Geek Out, mashup of all speakers, Three variations of copy, our audiences are 1% lookalikes. Very clear. Re-engagement. Who, who are the audiences that are fill the re-engagement bucket? I was actually gonna ask you, I think it's important. Go mm -hmm. through. The difference between re-engagement and remarketing, because I know you talk about this a lot. I love this stuff. Um, re-engagement are the type of audiences that have not been to your website before. These audience are seeing a piece of creative, commented, engaged, or liked, and then we're trying to show them another message based on what they saw at the beginning, okay? And so they haven't seen the website at all. But remarketing are those that seen a piece of creative, went from that creative onto your website, perform some sort of action on platform, whether they added something to cart or they um, click through a couple pages and those buckets are a little different. Th that means it's the difference between committing a little further to the marriage of purchase right. versus just like kind of flirting and like, hey, you're pretty cute. Got it. <clears throat> so going down the geek out funnel, at the top we're showing learn, learn newest, Tricks. Build, damn it. Build, uh, da da da, a brand. Test. Okay. So in the prospecting campaign, you're, you're speaking about learn the newest tricks. People want to get in because of that really high click through. How to build a brand from scratch, right? A lot of these people have great products, great ideas. They just don't really know where to start. Like we're not worrying about manufacturing or processing. We're learning about like what is necessary to build a brand using Facebook as your backbone. I think this is huge right now because I think like so many people are right now, they're into e-com, they've been drop shipping. And when they think of brand, they think of like McDonald's or Coca-Cola. They don't think about like, okay, I need to build a brand to be more stable on Facebook. How do I do it? So I do think people are being very interested in how to build a brand. Of course, right? So it's more than just finding a product. It's more than just having an idea. It's like, okay, how do I develop my avatars, which is what we're doing at the beginning, which was per, per speaker, you as a geek out, the, the, the owner of, and creative geek out, and then geek out itself, right? And then, so we as a brand, or me as your marketer, you as a brand go, I wanna go down, I wanna make sure I go down the speaker funnel, the James funnel, or the geek out funnel, right? And then you, for, you would formulate the difference between what messages you're sharing at the prospecting campaign, what themes you wanna carry through that might be questions at the re-engagement campaign, which is where we're gonna find ourselves right now. And then the final piece that you know is like speaking to why they need to buy it, at the remarketing level, okay? So at re-engagement level, since we knew that we have learned the newest tricks, build a brand and test a creative, spoken a little bit about on the prospecting, these are the types of creative that we're gonna formulate 
to then drive home another uh, reason why you need to come to the, the Geek Out Tour. Which would be basically, we're telling them like, why is it gonna be valuable for you gonna, to be there? Yep. What are you going to learn? What's the benefit? What kind of positive ROI will it have by being there? Exactly, so how do we show that with creative? What Got assets it. do we need? We well, already said it was testimonials. Yeah. Right? Re-engagement level, reiterating someone that's already gone through it, everybody that's gotten the value from it. Shaping, so it's the creative of learning the newest tricks is a testimonial. It is screenshot of what someone has implemented based on our teachings. And then it is um, it would be event bonus. And what I mean by event bonus is you're, what, where are we doing this at? Like a dope spot, right? It's a super sweet so spot. Like, yeah, I was gonna ask you, like when do we go through and, and go through the benefits? <laughs> like when do you, like first we're gonna hit them with the speakers. At what point do we hit them with the benefits? Right here. So re-engagement is you're speaking to a little bit of the actual things that you're gonna be seeing at the event. All right, let's go through the <clears throat> benefits a second so I know how to apply them. Okay, I'll go right here. So benefits of the Geek Out in Barcelona, July 17, 2018. This is my beaker, not the best beaker drawer. Um, okay, so benefits. It's gonna be uh, eight clear experts. Um, the format, I think, is a big thing I keep pitching. I think it's important the that format. everyone is gonna show in the same structure, they're gonna show one tip, maybe two, that they're using right now to crush it, and they're gonna show it with screenshots and case study, and then finish it with the actual recipes so it can be applied at home. Okay, I so think that's big. Format of presentation, yeah. takeaway recipe. Takeaway recipe is, okay. I think, a big one. What else? Um, the people going. The networking will be insane. The network insane. that happened yeah, last time, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many deals that come out of it. The people that come out of this are smart. Like, they already are, are strong with marketing and they're just gonna meet other kind of like baller people. That's kind of the way that this thing goes down. Okay, what else? Um, at night, we're having a pretty insane party. Um, well, obviously the event itself is dope. It's in the Hilton Hotel. Right. We're doing it real nice, high end. We got an app. I'm so excited having an app for an event. Um, but we really we put some effort into that. So uh, we'll have food at the event, and then we're gonna do like full bar cocktails. And then we'll go up to the rooftop and we're doing a party with Adviti. Um, so we'll have like a full dinner and party that all of our, the people at our event will get access to. It's definitely a private party. But we made a deal with them so uh, all of our, all the people at our event can join for the rooftop party. Huge. And then it's just eight hours. It's, it's, it's eight hours of just straight up learning. <laughs> like just high eight ROI. Experts, eight hours. Eight hours of high ROI learning. Oh. And then how to build a brand. There's an expert in here that can talk about how to build a brand. Whether it's their personal brand, whether it's a, a, all the brands that they've worked with. And that's gonna be shown with screenshots of the brands that they worked with. Pretty straightforward. And then how to test creative. I would actually put this a little bit into like the event bonuses because when we're talking individually about like going to everybody's ad accounts, um, that is where like I would talk about the event because yeah. that's what happens at the event. Um, re-engagement level. So the re-engagement again is specifically talking about what was presented at the prospecting level, just deeper and more specific to a question that a consumer might have. Got it. Re-engagement, and then we'll go right into... Now, who's, what are the audiences of re-engagement? FB, page engager. This is where it gets now that we have our per, like specific funnels. It's like video viewer off, UTM, video viewer off UTM of Brandon Nick 
or geek out. Yeah, dude, explain this with a okay. diagram because this is super dope. This is something Nick okay. and I were talking about earlier mm -hmm. where I had said something about uh, I wanted to sequence the ads and put in the tracking URL, like ad one. 25%. So then basically I, you know, when you do the, the building of the audience, I would target or I'd make an audience of just people that had seen ad one, that this was inside of the, the tracking link. And then this way I can kind of forcibly cap frequency and oh, show video, sense. show video two to people who've shown video one, et cetera, et cetera. Nick had a very nice idea where he was thinking that potentially we can even add the speaker's name to the UTM tags and make like uh, name specific funnels. So we would uh, add Nick to the UTM and then um, we would be able to build an audience of people that had seen the ads that had Nick and go from there. Now I hope this is this easy. Now I hope like in perfect, in a perfect world, this is when you go through, you convert and you buy, okay? So we have our funnel specific to the speaker and geek out. In, at the ad level, you're gonna append a UTM that will then include Nick plus video one. The, what we're, whatever we're launching with at the prospecting level, the audiences off of this, specific to the 25, 50, 95%, these are our engagers, right? So even I'll throw in um, engagers. So I have our 25, 50, 95, and engagers of those off of Nick's video one, okay? The next piece of creative would then go down at the re-engagement level, Nick plus the topic he's speaking about or a benefit of the engagement. So now it's like, okay, you saw Nick once, you enjoyed it, you moved further on, Plus, here's a little added bonus of what you're gonna get at the event. Got it. Okay, that's still UTM tag. So it's now Nick video two with, Nick video two plus event. Okay, now at this point, if you haven't purchased, fuck off. Yeah. I don't want you there. <laughs> <laughs> so say you had, say a little more nurturing, right? So what we could do is you do two different things. This can spider into speakers, different speakers that need to actually drive the point home because maybe I wasn't the one to speak to you. Maybe I wasn't. But say if you're going down, you enjoyed what I said, plus the topic that I've introduced, and now we're gonna show you something specific to the event. Because you're bought in once, continued, bought in again, plus a little bit of teaser of the event, and now it's like, here's what you're gonna get. Value proposition, one, two, three, done deal. And at this point, this is either a video or a still, but they've taken actions On site. And are you including call to actions in all of these these ads? I am, yes, because I firmly believe that you can build really, really cheap audiences with like PPEs and video views, but if they're not coming in as Facebook's dubbed convert converters, I would have to split test this, but the likelihood of them being a converter after everything, I'd rather launch already with the converters. Um, I can be pushed otherwise though. So if we come to ops on site, and if they didn't purchase, I want this audience plus the one that's gone through one, two, three touch points to see my last event specific creative to purchase. Got it. That funnel, that's one funnel. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. I would do this so different than you. The way that I look at it is, is so not even uh, close. You wanna see how I would do it? Yeah. It's very strange, dude. Teach me. Maybe, well look, I'm not a brand guy and I'm just spitballing, but I would just look at it in a, just a different way. So, step one, I would hit influencers to try to drive traffic. That'll be my step one, okay. right? And then I got tons of content. I don't have that much time. I would run one test to see the CTR per speaker. Like I would do a carousel ad or split test the speakers just to see where the CTR is uh, with let's say a video ad and take a look at how long people have been watching. By the way, the video ad of you, people are watching longer than the video ad of me, by the way. Hey. That's, where I, that's where I noticed this metric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
once I went through and uh, I would want to launch this on one level to basically see which speaker, then I'm not launching any conversion. Now I'm going to do education, personal, and I can't decide if I'm going to have a link here or not even. Um, so when I say personal education, that's these documentary style videos. Okay. I want to see or let people see who they are and I want to see how long they're watching them for. So I would run stuff here with no link. No link. No link. you're not selling. No, I don't want to sell at this point. You don't point. even want to give them an option to go uh, through. And also, I don't want to spend the money. I literally want to run video views with no link, with personal, like still run it to lookalike, still run it to the internal audience, everything else. Got but it. But just educate personally, right? Got it, got it. Then I want to educate to the same audience. I want to educate technically. So any type of technical uh, stuff that we have, like something like this, for example, any type of content that I have of you teaching, things with the PowerPoints, things of speakers speaking other places that show they have a technical ability, I would run this at the audience as well. So now I'm just educating. Now, is that specific to like what, they, what person they saw before? No. I, I don't think that I have the time or money to break it down so far. This is my, Got it. my thoughts. Like you can chop it multiple ways, but for me, it's a matter of either people know our brand or don't know our brand. If they don't know our brand, we need to educate them. If they know our brand but don't know our speakers, we need to educate them. Got I'm it. trying to get as much done as I possibly can, you know, with, with the amount of money that I have going on with it, you know, because of the cost per conversion. You know, and, and so far at this point on the education, if I get conversions, amazing. But I'm more just thinking about exposure, exposure, exposure. And then my real first conversion campaigns, and I don't know yet, but I think my first conversion campaigns, obviously we got the low hanging fruit. So uh, people that attended last time. Yep. Definitely. Uh, remarketing the influencer traffic will start day one or has already started. Remarketing has definitely already started. And then my first conversion campaigns, I think I want to run off people that have viewed these a long time, especially technically. Um, the, the high percentage viewers of these, I think are going to be you warm. Know, That's hot. hot yeah, topic. fairly hot. So my first conversion uh, would be based on the video views. One thing that I've been thinking about with the educate personally and this documentary is to break it into uh, pieces and do the add one, add two that we were talking about. So like basically put add one in the UTM, add two in the UTM, add three in the UTM. And this would be basically if I had a story, I would just break it into three parts and then run it as a little series. And I'm interested to see how this does. There was that, that guy, Tommy Powers, I believe, uh, at Ed O'Keefe's yes. event in Atlanta, the video, that did the, this with YouTube. The YouTube guy. Yeah, and he said that's all about small pieces and to run, so I really wanna test that. I think that's gonna be big. And then basically, this is all just basically pushing to remarketing. That's why I asked you if you'll ever break even on the front or lose on the front side just to remarket. No, I'll, if it was the brand that I owned and understood that there's an investment to be made, for sure. That's but what since, I think too. Since we're judged upon performance from day one, sometimes I don't have time. I, I think also too, since it's a high ticket item, that the education is is like really like a price priceless investment because I think it's gonna all, all the conversions I believe are gonna come from the remarketing. So now it's just like, okay, am I remarketing the correct people? And have I given them enough information to uh, go there? I guess the thing that I don't know what I should do is, is like when I look at remarketing them, right? I'm gonna remarket the abandoned checkouts mm -hmm. for sure. I'm gonna remarket the Maybe. people that clicked through the pre-sale but bounced. You know, these, these are good people. Maybe time spent on page. Um, what type of content do you think that I should use depending on where they are? Like if they abandon the checkout, then what do you come back with? Testimonials? Yes, because it's hot. Right, it's testimonials on actual results that they got from going to the event. Because now, as soon as they get to the cart and they didn't purchase, it's a couple of different things. It's price point, and right. they, you need to justify the price point right. by justifying with testimonials of people who purchased yes. and found success. Yes. Right. So, do you save in that? Let's say 
I'm remarketing right now. And they could have come from anywhere, okay? Yep. What would you hit them in the flow with? Like technical, uh, would you even use personal in remarketing or would you only use technical and uh, like technical example of them? Like technical education. Um, yeah, go there, technical education because at this point, if you went to the website, you've already seen the personal aspect of, uh, of the speakers and you've already seen the personality of Geek Out. So you're bought in, right? You've already been to site. But now like you're, there's something stopping you from making that purchase and yes. it's usually because of price or you're not getting enough recommendations from somebody else you trust. It's so funny, like uh, in phone sales, the pitch was always like, you know, usually when someone says no, it's because you don't trust me. What was it? Oh, either basically you can't afford it or you don't trust me, which is it? And I guess that's the same theory with that, why I go back to the testimonial education. Like if someone doesn't buy, they either don't have the money, which isn't even an objection, it's a something, um, or they just don't trust. And if you pop the testimonial in there as an ad, I think that this is nice. Of course, and that ad, then go down this funnel of like talking, okay, what's in that ad? Is it one testimonial? Is it a deep testimonial? What I would say is it's a screenshot of actual tangible results. Yes. And someone's speaking to like, I, I believed, I committed for it, and this is my result, and here we go. Got it. All right, dude. Well, we'll find out. Maybe we'll uh, Your funnel split versus test. my funnel? I think your funnel's gonna win. I think your funnel's, but I think we're also in different situations. You're this building it like for a brand, yeah. and for me, it's like out of my pocket, and uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and like really, for me, like to test the conversion, like really to test any of this shit, right? If I want to do it on a cost per lead, it's like two, three hundred bucks. A pop. You would have to imagine. Because of the cart, you gotta get it at least close to that. Because of the pack. AOV, let's say the 30% number, you're at a $300 cost per sale, or I'm sorry, $300 CPA goal, which means that just to see if something works, you want three to five conversions, it's like 1K to 1500. It's a lot it's of a, testing. It is, it is. So I probably will have to move back to an early indicator. I get well, it. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Thank you for joining us brainstorm on this. If you guys have any ideas or questions, post them in the chat, post them in the group, and let us know how you would run the campaigns uh, if you were doing the marketing for the event. Thank you mucho.